my fellow Amazonians, this is uh, Dr. Chua Yaba. Yesterday I sent out a, a written message concerning the death of, uh, of our soldiers. And I thought it was important for me to do a follow-up by audio so it will reach a wider audience. The reactions yesterday really showed the passion with which uh, Amazonians desire their independence. Sometimes it is during these moments that you are able to calibrate people's commitment to the cause of independence. And it is also during these moments that you can be able to understand evil um, and in all its manifestation. I am at the forefront. I see a lot of bad things. Things that can emotionally drown you. Things that can really destabilize you. Before you ever hear or see things, I have gone through hours of kind of a emotional distress. When you hear soldiers fall, what is of concern to me is the emotional state of those left behind and their security. Why most of you will be concerned with the dead. If you realize I am more concerned on how secure those who are alive are, how stable they are emotionally because they've lost a friend, they've lost a brother and they've lost a comrade. So I spend 90% of my time ensuring that they are okay, that they feel that we care, that they will be okay. So these things are, are things we deal with them privately before we ever come to you to address your own concerns. <laughs> because you are also soldiers. You might not be at the forefront carrying a rifle, you are those mobilizing the resources. You are those organizing demonstrations. So you are in a different battlefield. And so when one soldier falls in one battlefield, it affects soldiers all over. I can assure you, when people say our forces are divided, they are not as divided as we think. People in the Atlantic, soldiers in the Atlantic were not happy. They made some calls to third parties and asking how did this happen? Everyone was mad. So Amazonian soldiers and the Amazonian people do not want their own to die. Of course, there are a few broken families, broken individuals who take pride in the, in the demise of our people. But as I wrote yesterday, we should expect soldiers to fall. We should. This is war. This is war. Should we understand? No, I don't expect you to understand that. Should we rationalize it? I do not expect you to rationalize it. We are fighting a brutal enemy whose existence in our land has been due to the system it has built, a corrupt system, a system through which you only survive by paying allegiance to your butchers. And so we should expect that why the euphoria of the uprising and the revolution translates into pain and suffering and sometimes uncertainty in the period of the liberation, many of these beneficiaries will turn into traitors. Amazonian resistance is not unique in that particular aspect. I have given statements out, provided almost lecture-like uh, outings that have given you a lot of knowledge about what happened in Algeria. There were more traitors than there were FLN fighters. The west of Timor was almost like a bastion for treachery against East Timor. The 
black slaves in South Africa who were enabled apartheid have been a problem. The Zulu in Qatar was an, a hindrance. I wrote the last time between the day Mandela left uh, uh, jail, I think that was 11 February 1990, I can't really be certain, until 1994, there were more than 30 something thousand South Africans who died due to this internal fighting. These things occur. Soldiers also die because they are careless. And I've spoken about this yesterday. Allergy wouldn't have died if they take simple instructions. Sogma Bobby Ground Zero wouldn't have died. I see a traitor out there taking credit. No, he had nothing to do with it. We know what happened. They went off for an operation after hearing that the enemy had entered a particular location. And they came back after putting up materials in that particular location. Instead of moving exactly where they are supposed to move, they transited in a place they were not supposed to, doing, doing stuff that they were not supposed to. And the enemy benefited from that. I know there are black legs out here who, you know, they use their ties to communities, the whip sentiments. They are irrelevant to a great extent. They are irrelevant to a great extent. They have the be relevance on assumptions and on taking credit about things that they are not, they have virtually no idea about. They will up the game. I said the other time that, like Churchill said, this war will be fought in every battlefield, internal or external. And rather than sit and you are always complaining, take action. You know what I mean? Take action. All of these uh, broke noisemakers out here are very vulnerable. They're... I can't tell you how vulnerable they are. Take action. I have been put in a position as a leader where there are certain things I cannot do. But the time will come. Um, allergy to fail just by, by, by the enemy using a, a former a seven cutter fighter and, and, and kept him on the phone. And a direct call. The enemy could track that down to his location. He realized that he fell alone. And why is the top general all by himself? The supreme general of the ADF also died because of certain limitations and carelessness. Why the black legs played their own role if he had taken all measures that had been prescribed on how to handle yourself as a soldier he wouldn't have fallen. So if my Amazonian soldiers are listening to this audio, your security is the security of the barrack and it is the security of the Amazonian struggle. If you are careless, you put your own security and your life at risk, the security and the lives of your comrades at risk, and you put the security and the integrity of the Ambazonian struggle at risk. We have a moral obligation to conduct ourselves in a way that guarantees for us, our communities, our comrades, and our country its safety. I can't, as leader, simply just do what I want. I can't, because it would have a negative impact on the struggle. I can't just say what I want, because it will have a negative impact on the struggle. I have to conduct myself in a way that upholds my own integrity as an individual, the integrity of those who wield the 
arms on behalf of our people in such a way that if an outsider listens to me, the outsider has respect for the struggle and the Amazonian people. It's a moral obligation and we should not take it for granted. It's like your local pastor can simply just do whatever he or she wants because whatever they do has an impact in the community. What you must also know is that this struggle is one of who controls the narrative. Since the 11th of February, Cameroon has been blooded. The humiliation on the 11th of February, they have never really overcome it. Our media persons, the spokespersons, the, those who speak for us have been exposing the decay inside Cameroon itself. They have been exposing its collapse or its imminent collapse. They have been exposing a lot about a country that sits on sand. This has not worked well for the enemy. Our forces also on the ground have been doing their utmost best. Seven years into a war, they are still fighting. And it's a war the enemy said they will be dissolved in two weeks. So it is a burden on Cameroon. So they always need positive news out there. Most of the black legs that were screaming and shouting have vanished. Some have escaped. They are tired. Those who went into DDR and they used, the enemy used the DDR as a propaganda tool. It didn't last either. Every antique that they've invented as a propaganda machinery to undermine the spirit of our resistance has fallen flat on its face because of the fortitude that you've demonstrated. It is fortitude that will take us across the line. It is not your belief in the outcome you seek. It's fortitude to get up every day face the unexpected with fortitude. Remembering that for 63 years, these barbarians have butchered, murdered, buried people alive, raped. And no matter how treacherous the journey ahead looks, only cowards will walk back to drink the vomit that they've been escaping from. We do not have a choice. It is independence or death. Whether you die now with a bullet, you die in exile and be buried like a nomad, or you die in poverty in Amazonia, we don't have a choice. The liberation tax has been giving them nightmares. Heard about a meeting by the principal trade to Atanganji, threatening MTN that has been used as a spy institution to spy on our forces. They know continuous flow of money translates into continuous flow of bullets and rifles and RPG. They are not blind to the reality that they are facing in Bui, in Mezam, in Momo, in Meme and other places. They are not. They know who they are up against. They know that Dr. Cho Ayaba is focused on acquiring arms because that is the only thing that will keep us safe. For seven years, they have not been able to bring us down. The next 25 years, 
they will not even be around. And I want you to know that you are not here by chance. That for the past seven years, you have simply not survived by some luck. A liberation war is a very complex endeavor. And you design a strategy to survive. So when you see us fighting in Momo, we are establishing a base in Mezam, we are in Donga, we are in Fako, Meme, and other places fighting. It's not simply because we just want to fight the enemy in those places. It's what I call the multiplier effect. You do these things to be able to survive, knowing fully well your back is not backed by a superpower. Your coffers are not stuffed by some oil dealers. This war is sponsored by the Amazonian people through their widow's might continuously in times when they are happy, in times when they are not, in times when they are certain, in times when they are uncertain. What keeps it also going is a leadership that has faith and that provides clarity on what others have gone through, what we will go through, and what the outcome will look like. The combination of all of these processes and activities is what sustains the Amazonian struggle against an enemy backed by the International Monetary Fund, World Bank, and even our own resources. And I ask you to have fortitude. Like Colin Powell once said, even when you are cold, don't show you are cold. Even when you are hungry, don't show that you are hungry. You must have fortitude. The Amazonian struggle is a struggle that will define the Gulf of Guinea in the next 100 years. The world will have a choice between anarchy that has been created by the plantations that they have put in place called Cameroon, Nigeria, and all the other countries, or it will have certainty and stability in a new political dispensation that embraces local and international models of politics, economy, and social structures. This is not simply a war of liberation, specifically about the land. It's about the kind of society that we want. It's about the kind of life that we want. It's about the perpetuation of our culture, which is an embodiment of our lifestyle, our language, our food, and everything that gives us an identity. Cameroon's presence is not only about extortion, it's about imposing its own culture through its language, its legal system, a system of education. And without these resistance, a few years down the road, you must have lost everything. It's not simply a struggle for independence. It's a battle between ideals, a struggle between materialism and idealism. It is whether you want to leave exile and fly into a muddy, stinking airport and return back out here being unable to speak with pride and dignity because 
your backyard is full of mess or you want to learn in a country where you find your people living a life in dignity and on hope where you can drive on a highway without bumping into potholes that are deliberate all of us are soldiers of this liberation war and if every morning you get up and you are worried about a fallen soldier think about the thousands of ambazonians who are locked up in jail for nothing think about patasan as a teacher abdul karim as a muslim scholar think about professor awasu think about bbc manjo i'm providing you names of people the, the, the conrads and the others who sole crime might have been their position because how do you explain that these people that you get up every day and you say this war is because ayaba and the others are fighting we don't want to compromise how do you explain why tasang is in jail how do you explain why lecturers in universities in uh, in biafra land and nigeria are in jail in yaoundé you can understand even if you will not accept commanders being in jail as war prisoners how do you explain the attitude of a regime that will murder students that will burn villages because the people simply want the perpetuation of their own lifestyle that should be reflected in their curriculum of education in their legal system and in their way of life how do you explain this level of barbarism how how can you sit back and you look at the ambazonian fighters and see them as oh maybe if they surrender they, you will have peace if i ask all the forces to drop their arms you think you are going to have justice dial foncha in his grave and ask him if he had justice when he didn't will gone call mona and ask him if he had justice when he didn't will the gone go ask the family of kadina to me if his dead body mistreated the way it was was because he was carrying a rifle you are not in pain or in shock because the brave men and women on the ground carry rifles you are in pain and in shock because of a brutal barbarian that took over your land and has decided if you do not submit he's going to murder and burn down every village And let facts speak our forces are harassed they are taunted they are attacked i want you to tell me in a statistical form cameroon has killed more than 35000 of our people ambazonian fighters in the wildest of all with the exception of mine have not killed 100 people they have not for 63 years these people impose kale kale roadblocks to roadblocks extortion 500 years they've taken over our land through deals issuing land certificates no one is shouting on a daily basis you want to attack the integrity of ambazonian fighters for setting roadblocks to buy bullets They have been engaged of recent the concentration of attack on the Amazonian Defense Forces and other nationalist forces is because they've seen these nationalist forces as an obstacle to a compromise that will keep Amazonia under Cameroon. 
And I have said it, and let me repeat again. Cameroon will not exist without an independent Amazonia. Let them take note. Cameroon will not exist without an independent Amazonia. And there will never be any compromise that keeps an inch of Amazonian territory on their Cameroon's rule. So anyone out there having these discussions, meeting A, B, C, and D on a compromise position, know that I am more than the Berlin Wall. These barbarians should leave our land and allow our sons and daughters to have a life in dignity. Our mothers should go to their farms and be able to plow the fields and live with hope. We are not asking for their kidney. We don't owe them child support. And if you get up any day and you feel weary, note that we will be fighting this enemy until they are vanquished completely. Anytime you are on the ground, get up, dust yourself, and sing the anthem. Be inspired by it. There will be no compromise.